Each year, I clip and compile obituaries starting the day after this service. It's too long to deliver the whole memorial. It'll be available on our website if you're interested. But instead, I will pick and choose a few to highlight from each of the generations. But lest we forget, this was, yet again, a year marked by violence. We don't have a decent count of the number of innocent bystanders killed in the war in Ukraine, nor of the number of combatants killed on both sides. At least seven journalists have been killed covering the war in Ukraine, and Shireen Abu Akhla, who was shot while covering an Israeli raid in Palestine. 703 people have been killed, were killed in mass shootings last year in the U.S., over 221 so far this year. They seem to be happening every other day. And this number is probably outdated even as I speak it. We particularly remember the 10 people killed in Buffalo uh, and the 21 children and teachers killed in Uvalde this month. And 1,144 people in the U.S. were killed by police last year, 10 of them in Minnesota. 97 people died when their condo collapsed in Surfside, Florida. 170 died in flash flooding in Germany and Belgium. And so far, COVID has claimed over six and a quarter million people worldwide, over a million in the U.S. and 13,000 in Minnesota. From the greatest generation, those who were born in the time of the Great War and the Spanish flu epidemic. And yes, there are still a few of them around. In international affairs, Ingeborg, Inga Ginsburg, 99, daughter of a wealthy German Jewish businessman who bribed his way out of Dachau. She fled to Switzerland, where she helped American spies during the war. Later, she wrote songs and poetry and memoir worked as a journalist and as a financier. At age 92, she fronted a death metal band called Inga and the Tritone Kings. In America and even in European culture, she said, the old people are excluded from life. You have a chance to be heard. You can listen to one of her hits, I'm Still Here, uh, on YouTube. I want to be like her when I grow up. In national affairs, Bob Dole, 98. He represented Kansas in the House and the Senate from 1961 to 1996. Served as majority leader three times. He was his party's nominee for vice president and for president. Severely wounded in the last days of World War II, in his retirement, he devoted much of his attention to veterans' affairs. He was known for his sarcastic wit, which he turned on himself as much as on his opponents. After a crushing defeat in New Hampshire in his run for presidential nomination in 1980, he told the press the next day that, quote, he slept like a baby. Every two hours, I woke up and cried. <laughs> Among actors in film, Betty White, 99. Over a career that spanned seven decades, you know her for her roles as the sickening sweet Sue Ann Nevins in The Mary Tyra Moore Show, the terminally naive Rose Nyland and the Golden Girls, and the care caretaker Ella Ostrovsky in Hot on Cleveland. But she was also the first woman producer of a TV sitcom in the 1950s. She was honorary mayor of Hollywood in 1955, winner of eight Emmy Awards in various categories, three American Comedy Awards, three Screen Actor Guilds Awards, and a Grammy. In her own community, Joe Hogan, 99, professor and chair of counseling and student personnel at MSU and president of the IFO. Clayton Teedy, 97, professor of music, director of bands. He formed the Maverick Marching Band, Maverick Marching Machine, and the Concert Wind Ensemble at MSU, as well as the Lancers Marching Band, the Lake Washington Band Camp, and he performed for the Mankato Symphony. And Helen Stelter, 97. She and her husband founded Stelter Sewing Machines in Mankato in the 1960s. He repaired the machines. She taught us how to use them.
from the silent generation, those born in the Great Depression and the Second World War. In international affairs, Thich Nhat Hanh, 95, Zen master, prolific author, peace activist, and just a wonderful person. Maria del Rosario Ibarra de la Garza, 95. She was one of the founders of the campaign to find the desaparecidos from the dirty war in Mexico. When President Lopez Portillo finally signed the amnesty that released about 150 of the missing, her son was not among them. She became the first woman to run for president of Mexico, served two terms in the Chamber of Deputies and two terms in the Senate. Desmond Tutu, 90. The Archbishop of Cape Town, Chair of South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, advocate for racial justice and LGBTQ rights, and Nobel laureate. His moral courage made him a towering figure on the world stage, a beloved character in his own country, and he had just a wonderful giggle. Jihan Sadat, 87, human rights activist, wife of assassinated Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. She helped reform her country's civil rights legislation. They were affectionately called Jihan's Laws. They gave women the right to child support and custody in the event of a divorce. Her parents weren't sure about her marriage to a jobless revolutionary who had just finished a two-year prison sentence for his political activities. He was 30 and she was 15. In national affairs, Earl Old Person, 92, he lived up to his name. Chief of the Blackfeet Nation, longest serving elected tribal leader, 62 years when he retired in 2016. He told the nation, we don't need your help, we want your business. Authoring Lucy Foster, 92, first black student at the University of Alabama in 1956. After three days of rioting, she was suspended, quote, for her own safety, unquote and then expelled for defaming the university. She married, moved to Texas, where she had a career as a teacher. In 1988, Alabama reinstated her, and she earned a master's degree in education in 1992. In 2019, she was awarded an honorary doctorate. And three weeks before she died, the College of Education building at the University of Alabama was named in her honor. Norman Mineta, 90, interned in the Hurt Mountain Camp in Wyoming as a child. Japanese-American citizen went on to become a congressman from California, the first Japanese-American cabinet secretary. He served as Secretary of Commerce under Bill Clinton and Transportation under George W. Bush, back in the days when public service came before politics and one could serve in both a Democratic and a Republican administration. Madeleine Albright, 84, first woman to be appointed Secretary of State. Harry Reid, 82, for 30 years Senator from Nevada. For eight years, he was Senate Majority Leader. He helped pass the Affordable Care Act, the Dodd-Frank Act, and the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. And Max Cleland, 79, he lost an arm and both legs in Vietnam, and he went on to lead the Veterans Administration under President Carter. In science and business, Edward O. Wilson, 92, an evolutionary bi biologist, he was called Darwin's natural heir. He won two Pulitzers for his writing, the first on human nature, laying out the principles of sociobiology, which links behavior to genetics. His second Pulitzer was for the ants, his specialty in field biology. In 2006, he published The Creation, in which he argued that science and religion should work together to protect nature and the diversity of life on Earth. He went on to found the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Foundation. Willard Scott, 87. He worked at NBC for 65 years, more than 30 years as the weather forecaster on the Today Show. He was known for his crazy costumes, including dressing up as Carmen Miranda on the air to win a dare for a $1,000 donation to the USO. He also played Bozo the Clown, Ronald McDonald, and Santa Claus for the National Tree Lighting Ceremony. Barbara Bush gave him a kiss on live television during the 1989 inaugural parade. When the president remarked he didn't know she knew Willard Scott, the first lady replied, I don't, I just love that face. Ron Papil, 86, 
inventor and marketer. He founded Ronco, a marketing company, and appeared on many late night TV infomercials selling his inventions, including the Chopomatic, the Vegematic, and the Ronco Pocket Fisherman. He popularized the catchphrase, but wait, there's more. He was awarded the Ig Nobel Prize for Consumer Engineering in 1993. Among the writers, Robert Bly, 94, considered one of the leading poets of his age. The Minnesota poet's probably best known, uh, not for his poetry, but for his mythologizing in Iron John, a book about men. He also translated other poets, among them Rumi and Pablo Neruda. Richard Gindon, 86, St. Paul kid, whose career as a political cartoonist began at the Minnesota Daily. He published in the Tribune from the 60s to the 80s when he went to the Detroit Free Press. One of my favorite, I don't know how he managed to move to, to Detroit. One of my favorite cartoons of his, he, he understood Minnesota so well. One of my favorite cartoons has a woman telling her daughter, no dear, Edina's not a place, it's an achievement. He also co-founded the Brave New Workshop with Dudley Riggs, and he owned a Jazz Lab coffee house on Payne Avenue um, in St. Uh, Paul, which he described as, quote, a sort of surreptitious place, which was raided by suspicious St. Paul police one night during a great books discussion. Gary Paulson, 82, author of more than 200 children's and adult, young adult books, mostly based on wilderness adventures. His work included Hatchet and the River, Born in Minneapolis, he eventually settled in New Mexico, although he also lived on a houseboat in the Pacific and had a place in, the, in Alaska where he trained sled dogs, which he raced in the Iditarod. Anne Rice, 80, master of Gothic fiction. She's best known for her vampire books, beginning with Interview with a Vampire. Born Howard Allen Francis O'Brien. With a name like that, I change it too. Um, in New Orleans, where much of her fiction is placed, she was raised Catholic, but struggled most of her life with the church's stand on homosexuality, feminism, and artificial birth control. She said that the theme of her work was, quote, how one suffers as an outcast, how one is shut out at various levels of meaning, and ultimately, out of human life itself. Among actors in film, Mort Saul, 894, a stand-up comedian who specialized in biting social commentary, he transformed stand-up and social commentary and paved the way for the likes of Lenny Bruce, Dick Gregory, George Carlin, Richard Pryor. He was described as, quote, a very likable guy who makes ex-friends easily. He was particularly hard on the sanctimonious, describing, people, uh, describing liberals as, quote, people who do the right things for the wrong reasons so they can feel good for 10 minutes. He was still performing in his 90s when COVID hit. Jane Powell, 92, star of Hollywood's Golden Age musicals. She sang with Howard Keel in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, danced with Fred Astaire in Royal Wedding. She was born Suzanne Lorraine Burse in Portland, Oregon, was singing opera with a two and a half octave range on local radio by age five. While visiting Los Angeles, she was invited to appear on a show there. MGM signed her for a musical, heard her, signed her for a musical, Song of the Open Road with W.C. Fields, her character's name was Jane Powell, and the name stuck. Ed Asner, 91, actor and president of the Screen Actors Guild. He won seven Primetime Emmy Awards, five for his portrayal of, of Lou Grant, both as a comedy in Mary Tyler Moore Show and as a drama in Lou Grant. He also portrayed Santa in Elf, and he was the voice of Carl in Up. Emilio Delgado, 81, beloved actor who portrayed Luis on Sesame Street for 45 years. And Tommy Kirk, 79, a Disney child star. He starred in Old Yeller, The Shaggy Dog, Swiss Family Robinson, The Misadventures, Misadventures of Merlin Jones. After starring in 11 movies in eight years, Disney fired him when they found out he was gay. He then found work as a waiter, a chauffeur, the head of his own carpet cleaning company, but he said he had no bitterness, no regrets when he, uh, in an interview with the Kentucky uh, Herald Leader in 1990. In music and the arts, Dave Frischberg, 88, jazz songwriter and pianist, St. Paul native. He was known for his witty lyrics and melodic cleverness. 
He wrote many of the songs for Schoolhouse Rock, and he's probably best known for his sardonic, I'm hip. David William Carney, 87. We knew him as Guitar Shorty. The bluesman, known for his gymnastic antics on stage, he'd play guitar from a headstand, and he'd do backflips during his solos. He was a major influence on Jimi Hendrix, Buddy Guy, and fronted for the likes of T-Bone Walker, Little Richard, Big Joe Turner, and Sam Cooke. Don Everly, 84, the elder of the Everly brothers, uh, the rock and roll duo known for steel string guitar and close harmony. Their hits included Bye Bye Love, Wake Up Little Susie, All I Have to Do is Dream, and Kathy's Clown. Their musical style influenced, among others, the Beatles, the Beach Boys, the Bee Gees, and Simon and Garfunkel. Patty Maloney, 83, founder of the Chieftains, master of the tin whistle and the Irish pipes. He arranged all their music. They recorded more than three dozen albums, won six Grammys, and helped to revive traditional Irish music. Charlie Watts, 80, for 58 years the drummer for Rolling Stones. Strongly influenced by jazz, he also performed in his own Charlie Watts Quintet. Robert Louis Ritarelli, 79, the Philadelphia drummer we knew as Bobby Rydell. In the time between Elvis and the Beatles, he was the most popular teen singer in the country. He starred as Conrad Birdie in the movie version of Bye Bye Birdie, and Rydell High in the musical Grease was named for him. His song, Swingin' School, was the model for the Beatles' She Loves You. Veronica Yvette Greenfield, Ronnie Spector, lead 78, lead singer of the Ronettes and the original bad girl of rock and roll. Her best known songs were Be My Baby, Baby I Love You, Best Part of Breaking Up and Walking in the Rain. And Michael Nesmith, 78, the quiet one. He was a struggling singer-songwriter when he joined three, with three others for the made-for-TV rock band, The Monkees. When the group broke up four years later, he continued his career as a musician, but also as a writer, a film producer and director, a book author, media arts executive, and creator of the music video format that led to the creation of MTV. So much for being quiet. In sports, Gene Shu, 90, two-time NBA Coach of the Year, specialized in turning around losing teams, the Baltimore Bullets, the Philadelphia 76ers, the San Diego Clippers, he said, the whole idea of coaching is to be able to take any group and show off their strengths. Lee Elder, 87, first black golfer to play the Masters. He did it in spite of racist taunts all along the way. John Madden, 85, head coach for the Oakland Raiders. He led them to the championship in Super Bowl XI. He never had a losing season as a coach. He retired from coaching because he hated flying became color commentator for the NFL broadcasts and won 16 sports Emmys for his work. He also fronted for the Madden and NFL video game series. James Mudcat Grant, Jr., 85, he pitched in the majors for 14 years, including leading the Twins to their 1965 World Series victory. He also hosted a variety show on Twin Cities TV, The Jim Grant Show, in which he sang and danced. Mick Tinglehoff, 81, center for the Vikes, he walked on undrafted in 1962 and played for 17 years. With 240 games in a row, he holds the third longest starting streak after Brett Favre and Jim Marshall. He anchored the offensive line for 10 division titles in 11 years. Five times All-Pro, he played in four Super Bowls. And in our own region, Howard Hermel, 93, founder of A.H. Hermel. Originally, it was a candy company before it became a vending company. Irma Cragen, 87, co-founder with her husband of Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake. A registered nurse, she also worked at St. Joseph's Hospital in Brainerd. She founded the Heartland Symphony Orchestra Ladies Auxiliary. DJ Leary, 84, along with Weiss Spano and Sarah Janicek, he published Politics in Minnesota, an influential insider view of Minnesota politics and policy, long before there were blogs or the internet. And in our own community, Sigurd Lee, 95. For 40 years, he led the drama program at Bethany, as well as teaching English and humanities. Lynn Pierce, 92, history teacher at Lincoln Junior and West Senior High Schools for 35 years. Don Larson, 89, coach and teacher at Mankato West, also coached for a while at MSU. B. Musali, 88, 
among other things, professor of educational psychology at MSU. Ken Albrecht, 87, Nicola County Commissioner for 13 years, founding board member of the Southeastern Minnesota Initiative Fund, civil engineer, and a vegetable farmer out by Judson. Eunice Simonson, 87, ES <clears throat> ESL teacher in Mankato schools for 17 years, active in international, international exchange. Carol Peterson, 86, for many years assistant director of international students affairs at MSU. Don Carter, 84, retired pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Mankato. Arnie Lillo, 83, metal fabricator, started out fabricating antique tractor parts, shipping them around the world. In his retirement, he fabricated table lamps and metal yard sculptures, turning his Good Thunder hobby farm into a local attraction and selling his creations around the region. Malda Farnham, 82, business professor, assistant to the Dean of Business, and Mankato City Council member. And Lynn Weber, 78, librarian at MSU and cellist for the Mankato Symphony. And among our own at the UUFM, our members, relatives, and friends, Carolyn Evans Mosier, 93, Lori Evans' mother. Robert Wallace, 91, father of Linda Gansky, former chair of philosophy at MSU. He was also chair of the honors program when I first came to MSU, and he was my, my boss. Doris Ethel Nelson, 90, Kelly Brandkamp's grandmother. Margaret Preska, 83, longtime member, president of MSU and of Zayed University in Abu Dhabi, among many other things. Margaret was also my first president at MSU. David Allen, 83, dear friend, longtime member of our congregation, president of the board from 92 to 93. He was also a faculty librarian at MSU. Artis Gansky, 82, Lee Gansky's aunt, sister of Eugene Gansky. From the baby boom generation, those born in a time of economic growth in the US and rebuilding from the tragedy of war abroad. In international affairs, Paul Farmer, age 62, physician, humanitarian, he co-founded Partners for Health and worked among the poor, primarily in Haiti and Rwanda. In national affairs, Sarah Weddington, 76. At age 26, she successfully argued the case of Roe v. Wade before the Supreme Court. That same year, she was elected to the Texas House of Representatives where she served three terms before going on to general counsel for the USDA and later advisor in women's issues to President Jimmy Carter. Jim Hagedorn, 59, two-term congressman from the first district in Minnesota. William Jewett, 58, Vermont legislator who in 2013 helped pass a law which permitted medically assisted suicide. After retiring from the legislature, he developed terminal cancer and he used that law to end his life. In science and business, Neil Conan, 71, NPR producer and on-air personality, he anchored Talk of the Nation for 12 years. His five-decade career started when he was 17 and included a stint covering the Persian Gulf War where he was captured and held hostage for nearly a week by the Republican Guard. Maki Kaji, 69, you don't know his name, Creator of Sudoku, you know that name. He dropped out of college to start Japan's first puzzle magazine. A few years later, came up with Sudoku. Its name comes from the Japanese words for number and single. Among the writers, P.J. O'Rourke, 74, conservative sort of political satirist whose curmudgeonly persona belied his warm heart. He's best known for his books, including the New York Times bestsellers, A Parliament of Whores, and Give War a Chance. He once wrote, the Democrats are the party that says government will make you smarter, taller, richer, and remove the crabgrass from your lawn. The Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work, then get elected to prove it. Glory <laughs> Takes a minute, doesn't it? Gloria, <laughs> Gloria Jean Watkins, <clears throat> 69. You know her as Bell Hooks, her pen name taken from her maternal grandmother. Author, professor, feminist, and social activist, 
She wrote about the oppression and classism that arises from the intersection of race, gender, and capitalism. Among actors in film, Louis Whitlock III, 72, born in South Minneapolis, his childhood home is now under I-35W, he began dancing at age four, was performing professionally by high school. He acted in the founding company of the Chanhassen Dinner Theater, brought black nativity to Penumbra Theater, performed in the first national tour of The Wiz, and was State Department cultural envoy to Central Asia and the Baltics. He also, by the way, earned his MFA in theater from MSU Mankato. Louis, An Louis Anderson, 68, stand-up comic from Minnesota. He was also an actor. He won an Emmy for his character, Christine Basket, which he based on his mother. In music and in art, Naomi Judd, 76, part of the duo of the Judds with her daughter Winona. She committed suicide the day before she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. D Dusty Hill, 72, bassist for ZZ Top, uh, known for his sunglasses and his long beard. He was still touring with the band the week before he died. D.T. Thomas, 70, founding member of the soul funk band Cool in the Gang, famous for their songs, Celebration and Get Down on It. <clears throat> Jim Denami, 66, Ojibwa artist, known for his use of color, his acerbic sense of humor, his spirituality, and his mysticism. He's scheduled to have a major exhibition at the MIA next year, 2023. In sport, Lee Evans, 74, he won the 400 meter at the Mexico Olympics in 1968, also anchored the gold medal relay team. Both times, he set world records for the next 20 years, but he's best known for raising his fist on the medal stand to protest racism in the US. Luis, uh, Lucia Harris, 66, basketball star for Delta State. She was with the first woman's Olympic team scored the first basket, was the high scorer and the high rebounder for the team. She was drafted by the New Orleans Jazz, the first and so far only woman to be officially drafted by the NBA. But she declined uh, to report for practice, reportedly because she considered it a publicity stunt, which it probably was. In the region, Tom Peterson, 76, father of the Superior Hiking Trail, using USGS maps and a compass there was no GPS 35 years ago. He explored and mapped the first 200 miles of what is now a 310 mile trail. He said he had his dream job. I get paid to walk around in the woods. <laughs> Harry Musser, 76, owner of Harry's Hofbrau House in the old Burton Hotel, director of the Mankato YMCA, and owner of Ironwood Golf Course and Restaurant, which later became Applewood. Alan Jesperson, 74, godfather of Twin Cities Bluegrass, he organized the annual Laughing Waters Bluegrass Festival at Minnehaha Park for 22 years, led the Middle Spunk Creek Boys Band for 53 years. He also collected, refurbished, and sold vintage radios and parts all over the world. He even sold parts to Zenith. Bob Meeks, 73. For 38 years, he served first as a lobbyist and then as executive director of the Minnesota School Board Association. Hope Cook, 72. Art professor at MSU, she founded and directed the Carnegie Art Centers for much of her life. Bruce Davis, 71, guitarist for the Folky Doki Band. He was a radio announcer in KRBI in St. Peter, hosted a weekly folk music program in KMSU, and he wrote the rock band song, which became the anthem for the St. Peter Folk Festival. Mark Halverson, 70, Mankato attorney, very active in the community, among other things, hosting a blues radio show on KMSU serving many roles in the local DFL party and organizing the Save the Casota Prairie Committee. Deb Fleming, 67, former editor of the Mankato Free Press, mentor to many in our area. Kim Spears, 67, North Mankato City Councilman and business leader. Mel Reeves, 64, community editor for the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder and Twin Cities civil rights activist. And Denny Kemp, 63, Nicola County Commissioner, North Mankato Fund Days Organizer, North Mankato Police Officer, and South Central EMS Instructor. And among our UUFM community, Kent Durenberger, 73, Danielle Stedman's father, Larry Davis, 72, Sarah Davis's uncle, Barbara Jean Doyle, 71, 
We knew her as Barbara McConville when she was a member here before moving up to the cities. Jean Levette, 67, athletic director at the College of St. Teresa in Winona, quarter horse trainer and veterinary assistant, office manager and secretary for many organizations, organizer for mobile home court residents, and vegetable farmer, among other things. Mary Madison, 66, sister-in-law of Karen Knox, Jim Colstrup, 65, close friend of Marlene St uh, Steingreiner, and Dean Rogers, 63, Reverend Rita's brother-in-law. From Generation X, those born in the baby bust in the time of the Vietnam War and, first, and the first energy crisis. Remember Jimmy Carter's cardigan sweater? In science and business, Virgil Abloh, 41, designer for Louis Vuitton, who combined streetwear with high fashion. He learned to sew from his mother, but he was educated as a civil engineer at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, then as an architect at Illinois Institute of Technology. He moonlighted as a DJ, was nominated for a Grammy for his art direction on the West Jay-Z album, Watch the Throne. His work has been exhibited at the Louvre, the Gagosian, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. Among the writers, Brent Renault, 50, documentary filmmaker and journalist, he was shot to death outside Kyiv while covering the war in the Ukraine. Among actors and, and, and film uh, uh, people, Michael K. Williams, 54, actor who portrayed Omar Little, the gay stick-up man in the TV series The Wire, for which he received five Emmy nominations. He grew up in East Flatbush, began his performing career as a backup dancer in music videos for George Michael and Madonna. He was slashed across the face in a bar fight when he was 25 and directors started slotting him in thug roles and he played Tupac Shakur's brother in Bullet. And even from Generation Z, those born in the 21st century, Paris Reuger, 21, they grew up in Mankato, but moved to Portland, Oregon after graduation. They established themselves in Portland as the Prince of Cyber Rage Music, DJing under the name Golden Boy. So there are many others whose names I have not read, some known to most of us, some special to one of us. Take a moment, please, to speak aloud the names of those who have died this year, who hold a special place in your memory. Tom Hinsberg. Thank you.